a pleasure to, to see you all this morning. As my colleague, Pastor Jean-Pierre said, it is always good to see the church uh, coming together to fellowship, to worship. It's very beautiful. Uh, I wonder what you, what, you are, what you are seeing in the front. You see a table. Uh, you see with a very white cloth. Uh, cloth. Um, and everyone is wondering what is this. And I know on the second service, like in the second service, we have few people who will stay. We know very, very well. Not everyone will stay. Uh, as I was praying and preparing, saying, what should I share with the church? And I said, you know what? Sometimes we read about Holy Communion, we read about during the Holy Communion, but I said, let's, let's see if we can share with you what does this mean? What does this mean? And why is it important? To the church, but also to you who came today. Our text, or our main text, I will say many verses will be in Exodus chapter 12. Like to leave. Why, what does that mean to, to come together as a church? Um, What, what does the whole communion mean? And does this have a, a significance in, in the Old Testament? Some, some people say Old Testament is Old Testament. But let me tell you, there is no Bible without Old Testament. There is no Bible. We cannot say we have uh, the Bible without having Old Testament. Because what is in the Old Testament is... Um, a picture of what uh, would happen in the New Testament. Father, we pray that you, you be with us again as we read this, these words. I'm praying that will not be my words, but the word of God. That the people will understand the scripture. And I will understand the scripture. You will help me, Jesus, to unpack the truth of scripture. And whoever is here today will know what does this mean. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Let's read uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12. Uh, let's start. Uh, from verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for him self a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. You lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep of, or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14 days of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at, to, at uh, twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts. And on the length of the house where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on the night roasted in a fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herb they shall eat it 
Do not eat it raw. Nor boiled. At all with water. But roast it in fire. Its head with its legs and its internals. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on you west, you sandals on you feet, and you staff in you hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord is the Passover. Praise God. This is church is Passover. This is not church is Holy Communion. This is not church is it is God, it, it is the Lord is. It has not been started by the church. It has been instituted by Jesus himself. And Jesus himself, he was a Jew. He knew uh, what does it mean to celebrate God's victory. First, we are celebrating like Holy Communion or Lord's Supper because of what happened. So the Bible says here first what the Israelites should do. First, they should make sure that they choose a lamb with one year. Blemish. Without blemish. It means the lamb had to be holy. And again, if the congregation was very small, I mean, if the household was very small, they should bring another household next to them so that they can have one lamb. That's what it says. Because it says, they shall eat the flesh on that night. It means, you cannot say you cannot consume the lamb flesh but flesh roasted not boiled it roasted what does this mean it should be roasted on the fire it should be roasted not put in the, in the water and, and boil it it has a great meaning Jesus himself you could see the suffering. The fire means suffering. It means that the fire consuming the lamb. Suffering of Jesus Christ. And he said, you eat it also with the bitter herbs. You eat it with it. What does this mean? Jesus himself also when he was on the cross, it was like a bitter. Even, you know, they gave him even a wine that was bitter. It was like saying what would happen to Jesus Christ. But the verse I like it here, it says, Do not eat it raw or boiled or with water, but roast it in fire. Its head with its leg and its internal. You shall let none of it remain until morning. They should consume the lamb in entirety. The whole lamb. Bones and stuff like that. They shed. Eat it until the morning. Burn it with the fire to be consumed. Like, it mean, the fire will consume what you cannot finish, the fire will finish it.
So this has a great meaning in Christianity. It means when you receive Jesus Christ, you don't receive Jesus Christ in a part. You don't consume Jesus Christ in a part. You don't receive salvation. Salvation would be complete. Completeness in salvation. It means when you consume Jesus, consume him whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is nothing you should you, you can say, you know what? I want Jesus. Eh? You, you are here, yes. When you receive him as your personal savior, you consume him whole. My fellow brothers in another church, they used to sing a song. And I used to sing a song. Did, have you ever sing that song? Did you sing that song? He says he's so sweet. You cannot eat him in a part. You consume him and you finish him. And this man, Lily, he identifies with Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And say it. Anything that should be consumed by the fire. I, I just tell you, what you cannot chew on Jesus, what you cannot chew and finish. What you cannot chew and finish. There's something like of Jesus, sometime, uh, he told them, please, whoever does not eat on me, does not drink on me, and that's not my disciple. The disciple says, you know what? Are you telling that you can eat your flesh and they want to live? But with the Holy Spirit, with the fire of God, he make a Arab to You understand? What, what is remaining? The fire of God, umuriro man, umuka man. That's why he said, when he comes, he will reveal as Abijisha. He will consume. We are consumed with the fire of God. We consume Jesus Christ in its entirety. As we celebrate the Holy Communion, please remember. It's Jesus complete in you. That was the first meaning of Passover. Second, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your standards on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in the haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Let me tell you, when we eat Holy Communion, it means that we are ready. We are ready that always ready to go to heaven. Always ready when we just come back. Always ready when we die. Always ready. It means we are ready to go. Let me tell you, the people who don't eat Holy Communion, I am telling you, you are not ready in your heart. You are not ready in your Christianity. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know what you are doing, but whoever eat this whole on this, you, are, you must always Hallelujah, 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 Sandals on. What is sandals on? Ready. Is the gospel of Jesus Christ is on you. The gospel is on you. You are ready for the service. You are ready for action. You are ready always. Someone who eats on you can't eat Holy Communion and you be passive in the ministry. 
ntabwo ushobora kurya aho ri communion ngo umuntu wicaye guza doing nothing in the word of god in the church you should always be ready haleluya ntabwo wari ifunguro ryera nurangiza ngo wibuka umwami and you stay inactive it's not possible it's not possible it's not possible <laughs> you can't be lazy urye ifunguro ryera so sometime it's very important that we, we talk about this not only on like when you go because i know some of you you will leave i don't and i don't know why you leave you have to check yourself why do i leave and and also he t- says the reason that we and he said for the reason why you have to eat to sit as the family and you celebrate i like this verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt on that night and we strike all the first born in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all gods of egypt i will execute judgment i am the lord now the blood shall be a sign verse 13 now a blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you i will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt the bible says whoever eat on my bread whoever drink the bible says nubwo yaba yarapfuye even if he will die for me i will take him out of the dead nzamuzur i will make him reason again because we are we don't belong to the dead and he said i will pass over you when i eat holy communion or when i participate in this gathering and i remember i remember what god has done in my life because of his blood there is no judgment can you say amen can you shout amen can you shout amen? amen because of his blood no judgment so when we eat on like we are eating we are uh, drink on the cup it mean that i have been spared i have been spared when the judgment will come to judge actually you should know that this mean that you are the part of the body of Christ when the judgment will come because you have been eating on holy communion confessing the blood of Jesus confessing the death of Jesus Christ confessing his resurrection Jesus Christ will pass over you when he will come to strike the world do you know do you see the meaning now I will pass over you. It means that when we are eating this, uh, for us, we are celebrating what Jesus has done. It means that he has shed his blood for you. He was pissed on and put on the cloth because of you. Therefore, I am celebrating his victory. Whoever is celebrating his victory, he's saying, your blood covers me. And there is no judgment. There is no judgment. And the verse 14 is, So, this day shall be to you a memorial. When you are going to celebrate, it will be a memorial. It will be to remember. Bring back to your memory what I have done. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a feast by 
and everlasting godliness. And he gave now the, the, the people who should eat this and how. And he said, verse 17, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person should be cut off from Israel. On the first day, they shall be a holy convocation. And on the seventh day, they shall be a holy convocation for you. No manner of work shall be done on them. No, no manner of work shall be done on them. But that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared for you. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this same day, I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generation as everlasting ordinance. And verse uh, uh, 25. It will come to pass when you come to the land and which the Lord will give you, just as he promised you, that you shall keep this service, and it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? As people are asking themselves, what, is that, what does this mean? What does this mean? Why, why Holy Communion? Why this temple? What does this mean? And this is what he said. When your children say to you, what do, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Praise God. You tell them. He saved us. He saved us. So if you ask about the Holy Communion and when the children ask you when you get home or when non-believers ask you, what are you doing? You tell them, for us, we have been saved. For us is a sign that we have been saved. But he struck them. So there is a sign, let me tell you. A sign of someone who celebrates the Lord's Supper is different from someone who does not. The reason why this is so powerful is because when we do this, he saved us. When I eat on the bread, when I drank on the cup, I am saying, Jesus Christ, you have given your body to be beaten. You have been given. You have been put on the cross. To be uh, hung on the cross. Through your body. Mibjimba. Yeah. When you do this. We are healed. Through this. We are saved. Praise the Lord. So what are you proclaiming? So when you go out. After the second service. Hopefully. I believe if you don't have Holy Communion here, I trust that you have Holy Communion somewhere else. Maybe in your own church or maybe in your own congregation. And he said, verse 43, who should eat with us. <laughs> Who should eat with us? Is it everybody? Let's see. Let's see also what happened here. And he said, and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. This is the ordinance of the Holy Communion. And he said, no foreigner shall eat it. it. <laughs> No foreigner. Why? The foreigner had other gods. But if it is in the man. The foreigners 
had other beliefs. They did not believe in God Jehovah. They did not believe in God uh, El Shaddai. They did not believe in God uh, Elohim. They did not know him. And say, therefore, whoever eat on this, he should not be a foreigner. We were foreigners. We did not Christ. We didn't know Christ. But by his grace, by his mercy, through his blood, through his death, through the resurrection, we are no longer foreigners. We are his children. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout hallelujah? If you still eat Holy Communion, if, if you celebrate this, my friend, I'm telling you, you are not a foreigner. And he said, a foreigner should not. I just want to tell you, we have uh, 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 Nora Church. He has many friends of the church. But we want also to tell you another level Next level of being a, a, a member of Jesus' church, it is also to be ready to take Holy Communion. It is even to be part of the church. And say, no foreigner will eat it. And he say, but every man servant who is bought for money, but they want to be part of this. They said, when you have circumcised, when you have circumcised him, <laughs> then he may eat. <laughs> now, there is a sign. Nimba yerachebk. Yerachebk. Nimba yerachebk. Nimba yerachebk. Ariko akabaru munu umu for us yes he said we are not circumcised by flesh circumcision the circumcision that Jesus wants is a heart circumcision yes nashim ntabwo tukebwa umubiri ahubwo tukebwa iki umuti umutim it means that the old is uburyo bwo kubaho bwa mbere the old system, wa munu wa mbere. Uwanguo, ni wa imana, ikuraho, ikamukuraho. Ya aranji zika duhundi munu musha. And he give us a new person in Jesus Christ. He should be circumcised. Someone who eat this one. He should be circumcised. No munu wa chepk. No munu wa jizek. Have you been circumcised? Circumcision, spiritual circumcision is the... Is, um, uh, circumcision was a sign to introduce you to the Jews. It was a sign to introduce you to the new belief of Judaism. But for us, that is no longer a case. I'm telling you. For us, we only have one circumcision. is salvation. Through salvation, we are, be, we are introduced to the family of God. Ah, uh, man, uh, Man, Circumcision. That's very interesting. No, no, umu umu a surgeon, uh, a, a surgeon, and a hired servant shall not eat it. In one house, it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house, <laughs> nor shall you break one of his bone. All the congregation said, shall keep it. And when a stranger dwells within you and wants to keep it, pass over to the Lord. Let him marry, be circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native of the land. For no circumcised person shall eat it. No circumcised. Someone who is not a Christian. Someone who is not a believer. Someone who does he do not receive Jesus Christ as his personal savior. He should not eat it. As a church of God, we want to read Colossians chapter 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 to 8. 
First Colossians chapter 5, 7 to 8. And we wind up our service. Let's read. 7 8. Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lamp, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ our Passover was a sacrifice for us. Praise God. What does this? Which I like, wanted to make it. Therefore, purge out. What does this mean? Uh-huh. Old leaven. That you may be a new lamp. Since you truly are unleavened. I like, I like this. Since you, you truly. I like this. Since you truly are unleavened. I like this. Since you truly are unleavened. I like this. Since you truly Therefore, purge out all the that you may be a new lamp. Okay, since Kuko, Kuko, Therefore, purge out the old leaven. That you may be a new lamp. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. truly, since you truly are unleavened, aho go, evango, kuko mubju kuri, muri mnevge, mutarabu musembro wacher. Truly, I don't know if much in other languages. C'est la vérité. Mngi kure mu musembro, mngi yezeho. Ariko imamu mukuye kuyezaho, mngebu bunde. Your identity, your identity, who you are. Of the old and leaven. Your identity has been changed. Your identity has been changed. Truly, you are an leaven. And since you truly are an leaven, it means that it's very sad when you see a Christian living a life which is contradicting of who he is. Which one? Malice. In the they call it. What else? Huh? Weakness. And there is a contrast here. Con but unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Two things. Christian should be a sincere Christian. Yuru, Christian life should be a sincere Christian life. I should be a trustworthy person. Therefore, if you want to partake on Holy Communion, God is telling you, Purge out, clean yourself. So, Mubayuda, in a Jewish tradition, before they have Holy Communion or Passover, let me call it Passover, they had this, they have to clean their houses. They have to clean the whole house. They have to be holy. They have to, they have to be holy in everything. Therefore, as we celebrate today as the church, God is calling you. You should be holy as I am holy. Because you have to remember that I am your sacrifice. And I have been sacrificed so that 
the judgment when it comes, it will pass over you. Or you will pass over you. Let's pray. Remember the people who should... Uh, this is the very next level of teaching. How are you living your Christian life? How? Are you circumcised? Or are you, or, 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 are you still a foreigner? Are you still a foreigner? You don't know about this. Are you still a non-believer? You don't know Christ as your personal savior. So do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross so that you can have eternal life? Do you want the blood of Jesus to be on you as a sign? Do you want the blood of Jesus Christ to be on you as a sign? So that when Jesus Christ will come back, he will be with you and just uh, say, this is my child. I remember Rahab. Do you know a prostitute? His name is, uh, is Rahab. Do you, do you remember he, her? When he, he opened up the doors for the spies and said, you know what, I, we will come and we will destroy this city. We will come and destroy it. And he said, but we want to give you a sign. So that when we come in this city, you will not be destroyed. You take a cloth, a red cloth. A red cloth. Red cloth and put it on your uh, window. And when we come, and when we come, we will see there is a sign on this house. Please destroy other houses. But because of this woman, he treat she treated us well. She was very kind to us, and we want to spare this woman, even if she was a prostitute. But said, you know what? Now she was not saved because of who she was. Or because she did not have this kind of extra uh, grace or whatever. But she said, you know what? I need to obey and put this uh, uh, red cloth on the window. And when they came, they destroyed every house. But they spared Rahab's house. Why? Because of the red cloth. Of the red cloth. It will not destroy you. Dear church, God also has put a sign on his people. And this sign he has put on his people, they are the people who have believed the blood of Jesus Christ that it cleans the sins, that the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to cover you, that there are those who have received him as a uh, personal savior, they are those who are saved. I want to give a chance to some people in the congregation. Do you want to be part of this? Do you want to be part? Do you want to have extra step to not only continue to come to fellowship Sunday because we have a very beautiful song, because we have great worship, because we have a very great fellowship, but you say this morning, I want also to be, to share I want to sh I want to to share holy I want to to be like the church I want uh, at a time to get baptized and also have holy communion with the church otherwise you are out of the door you are out of the 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 the, the, the board of cross if you are here and you say I want to commit my life to Jesus Christ and I want also to be circumcised in my heart and I want also to not feel a foreigner in this church. I want to receive Jesus Christ now. Because I want Jesus Christ to spare me when he will come back. Ndashako Yesu Christo, nanje andokora, akanshira echi menyezo, kujirango na agaruka nanje. Aje guchiri manza wazimana wafui, that he will spare me, nanje azandokori. If you are in this congregation, and you want this, you can stand up and pray together. Do we have someone in the church who can believe this teaching? If you are here, again, I'm calling you. Please stand up or raise up your hands and we pray for you. Did you hear the gospel today? If you are here and you say, I want Lily, Jesus, to give me that sign of the blood.
I want salvation. Can you please bow your heads and pray? Just bow your heads and pray. Pray for that heart. That person who heard the gospel now. If you are here and you say, you know what, I want to be part of that. Can you raise up your hands and we pray for you? We want to pray for you and receive salvation today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have one hand who is who said, I, I want I need salvation. Do we have someone else in the congregation? Praise God. We have two, 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 two people who rose their they hands. I need someone. Let me tell you, Jesus will come back. Yes, Azagaruka. And when he come back, he will not play with us. No game now. Yes, Nagaruka. He will not play game with you now. You know what? He will spare you because there is the blood of Jesus on your head. I just want another son. I feel like God wants to save people today. I feel Jesus Christ wants to put you a sign on you now. We have three people who said yes. We have three people who said yes this morning. We have three people who said yes. Can you please stand up when we pray for you? Those who rose up their hands, stand up and I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Please stand up and we pray for you. Where you are. Praise God. Let's clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap to the Lord. Let's clap to the Lord. As you clap, think of yourself. Now, I want to pray for this. You are very special. You are very special. And you want to be part of us. You want to be part of the church. Because the Lord is calling you. Is telling you, I love you. I love you. I have died for you. I love you. Jesus is calling you. Please come forward. Come forward. Pastor, I want to pray for you. Please come as a sign of believing. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank you so much, Brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for accepting Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Please come forward and we are going to pray for you. Can you stand up as the church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are very happy that you must come to the church. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Ngushimi ye, ngushimi ye kubgawe ne data. Ngushimi ye kubgamu shichi wanje. Ngana wita ama wiman. Weme ye kwa achira Yesu Christo. Beme ye kwa achira Yesu Christo. Beme ye kwa achiri chime nyezo. Beme ye kubam kuza muyun muri yinzu. Yo mngami. Ndibgira yuko. Abeme ye kujana muri yanzu. Naba Yisraeli. Baga sanjira. Nubgo bara vanye jiputa. Ariko bara chijijwe. Ariko wabanyuzeho Mngami na kushimiye Banyureho mngami na none Mngizi na rja Yesu Kristo Ichi menyeto cha maraso Ichi menyeto cha gachiza Ichi menyeto Choku menyimana Urabaha magaye nona Ubahaye kuchizwa nona Ubahaye kukumenya nona Nanje ndaba senje Father in the name of Jesus Christ I am praying for them God That you will know you That you will know who you are I thank you Jesus I thank you, Jesus Christ. You are our some God. You are our some Lord. We thank you. And we clap for you, Jesus Christ, because you are good God. Thank you so much.